So back to this. So we have our um, viscous sublayer. We have uh, the turbulent region. So things to know, I guess, conclusions from that. We can uh, define something called the uh, turbulent conductivity. So we call that K turbulent. So that is, say, the effective, um, the effective ability to, trans to transport heat uh, in the turbulent region. So K turbulent is almost always much greater than, or it is always much greater than the actual molecular conductivity. So we have the, uh, a much greater ability to transport heat in the turbulent region. Um, some other things we can note are mu turbulent, which is our uh, turbulent viscosity, is again much greater than regular mu. And we note that uh, delta m um, is typically a lot smaller than delta uh, m laminar. Um, let's see, this, not delta m, delta vs. Viscous sublayer. Delta Vs is much smaller than delta M laminar. And that's all much smaller than uh, delta turbulent. I guess delta M turbulent, if we're in here. OK, so those are just some takeaways there. Yeah? Um, so like viscosity and conductivity are like a congruent property. Mm -hmm. So what I mean here is if we now go to, uh, if we now um, include the, the advection part of it, we can say like, uh, although this is not a molecular property, I can come up with an averaged equation that looks like uh, our typical equations, right? And, and in that, we sort of back out what the effective conductivity would be just by looking at the heat transport across it. So it's, a, it's an effective thing that includes the, the advection of the fluid. Um, so looking at this in a slightly different way, I guess if we have some laminar boundary layer, it's hard to see, if we have a laminar boundary layer and then we like sketched out the temperature profile at some point here, that temperature profile would look like this. Right? So this is our, our temperature as a function of y. Um, if I were to model this, I would say, all right, I've got some surface temperature here. This is Ts at these positions. And I'm going to draw, let's say, uh, a thermal resistance here out to the edge of the, the boundary layer. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this would be out here T infinity. And my resistance, right, I have heat flow in this direction. So my resistance would be proportional to delta T um, over K. All right, this is one over my heat transfer coefficient. So this is our laminar model. Right? We have these two resistances. In the turbulence model, um, we have the viscous sublayer, and then we have that, the turbulent region. Um, and so we would model that in a slightly different way. We'd say, OK, here's my viscous sublayer. I'm going to have first a resistance that goes from the surface Ts to the edge of the viscous sublayer. So that would be delta Vs over K. And then I have, in this region, another resistance. And that's given by delta T turbulent over K turbulent. It's a little hard. Um, Delta T turbulent over K turbulent, right? effective conductivity there. Um, so, OK, I have these two resistances. I would have to model them in series in order to get uh, the result for the turbulent region. Um, so if we write out some equations for this and we can make some conclusions, we would say Q dot double prime S is equal to Ts minus T infinity over resistance. Let's see, this is in the laminar region. So that'd be delta T in the laminar. Um, over K, right, and that's uh, H laminar times T S minus T infinity. So then we say H laminar is approximately equal to delta T laminar over K. Right, that we know already. So now if we develop our model for the turbulent region, it would have to look like this. It would be del uh, Q dot double prime at the surface is a 
equal to t s minus t infinity over uh, the resistance. So that's going to be series resistance. I'm going from t s up to t infinity at the top. Um, so my series resistance has to include both of those. So I write that out. First t infinity. So this is, uh, let's see, t s so delta v s over k plus delta t turbulent over k turbulent. Um, and then that would be h turbulent, uh, h turbulent times that temperature, so t s minus t infinity. Um, so this is saying h turbulent is equal to 1 over delta v s over k plus delta t turbulent over k turbulent. Um, now, what can we conclude, I guess? If, I guess you have to maybe take my word for it, but it sort of makes sense. We want to know whether these two, uh, how these two things relate to each other. So how does this resistance relate to this resistance? Um, it turns out that because of the conductivity in the turbulent region, the, the effective conductivity, k turbulent, is so much bigger than k, even though delta T turbulent is also bigger than delta Vs, this one sort of outweighs this one. Um, meaning, uh, we can conclude that H turbulent is approximately equal to just delta Vs over K. So I can get really close to my estimated temperature profile by totally neglecting heat, uh, temperature drop across the turbulent eddy region. So if I draw this temperature profile, I guess I'll do that here. So if I pick a position here, draw the temperature profile, what would I expect to see? I guess I would expect to see that almost all of the temperature drop happens between here and the edge of the viscous sublayer. And then there's maybe a little bit that happens outside of that. Um, let's see, did that backwards? Uh, yeah, it's backwards, sorry. Because the units don't even work out. Yeah, so, um, K over delta Vs. Okay. Yep, sorry. So watts per meter squared Kelvin, watts per meter Kelvin. Yeah. How about I do this? <laughs> That's what I meant all along, right? You just knew that. OK. So anyways, on the temperature, what would we expect? We'd expect to see almost all that temperature drop occurring between this, the surface and the viscous sublayer. And then you get sort of a, a little bit of a temperature drop that goes along with that vertically. So this is my t as a function of y. Um, so while the, the turbulent boundary layer will grow, grow really quickly, it turns out that the heat transfer and the shear stress is really governed by this viscous sublayer. Like that's what's dominating it. So if we can come up with a model that tells us the thickness of that viscous sublayer, that's really all we need. Okay. On ex an external flow. Um, okay. Uh, qu any other questions on that? Um, let's see, I think we can, what else do we want to say here? Yeah, so let's just um, sketch out maybe one more thing. Uh, so if we want to care about, we care about like the engineering quantities that go with this, like, okay, vis viscous sublayer thickness, all that sort of fine, but really what we care about is the heat transfer coefficient, the shear stress. So let's just look at how those things behave in these types of systems. So it'd be, here's our, um, external flow over a plate. So I want to plot out on um, this axis, let's say h is a function of uh, position x. And let's say this here is my uh, position at which turbulence will uh, start to develop. So if I want to plot h as a function of position, 
do that in green here. So H would go something like this. Oops, something like this. Uh, we're at the front of the surface. This is going to infinity. So this is my H. Um, so it's dropping uh, as, we, as the boundary th layer thickness develops. Now we get to this critical point where the transition starts happening. Um, so when that happens, uh, what's, you're going to start blending these models, but the heat transfer coefficient is going to go up, right? Because our viscous sublayer thickness is dropping. Then turbulence gets established, and the viscous sublayer is formed, and then you start um, developing the viscous sublayer, and so that starts looking like this. Right? So this is now our uh, turbulent H. Right, so think about it's sort of the inverse of what's happening in the boundary layer thickness. So that's for the, the H part of it. We can do the same thing for shear stress. So shear stress, again, would be you know, at infinite at the leading edge. It's going to go down, do something like this. Uh, it's going to transition. And then it's going to sort of follow. Right, so this is our shear stress at the surface. Um, so I guess it's just good to kind of think about what's happening here. What this is telling you is the worst possible place for heat transfer is just before you transition to turbulence. So if you're designing a heat exchanger and you design it for just below the critical number, crit critical uh, Reynolds number, you're doing a bad job. Right? Make it turbulent. Right? Or figure out how to uh, break up the boundary layer like you did in that homework. <laughs>